Okay, uh, so to start with, this is a uh, view from the, the top of our new site at the Web SDR. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about the antennas in detail, but uh, that's the 77 antenna there with uh, masthead preamp. Uh, this is the antenna that we use for 10 gigs, so that's a uh, horizontally polarized multiple slot antenna. And then that's the helix we use on 2 meters. There. Uh, so we've moved. Um, we were, until uh, about a week and a half ago, uh, located up here near Basingstoke. And then our internet connection was a 6 kilometer Wi-Fi link uh, across to Noel's house. Um, we've now moved to this new site in Farnham, and we've got on-site high-speed internet, so a lot of the bandwidth problems are gone, and uh, the antenna is quite a lot higher up as well. So this is the new site. Um, there's a company based there, but they don't use the mast, so uh, we've been very kindly given us use of the mast. And it would. It's a wooden mast, yes. <laughs> no smoking. <laughs> uh, it's what, 1940s, I reckon? Yeah. Yeah. 1950s. Have you got the queer side? No, but you need it. It needs it. It's all right for the moment. It's reasonably sturdy. Uh, so it's got the, it's an old CAA experimentation tower. Uh, so it's got a bunch of DHF, UHF uh, quarter waves on it, which uh, you can see on all these arms that are still there. And it's still got a lot of the original coax runs as well, which have been found to be good. Uh, so we're making use of those. Uh, so these are the antennas that we've mounted at the top. Uh, these are designed by uh, Martin. And um, they're designed to be both vertical and horizontally polarized, uh, so that you can use them for listening to FM, or you can use them for horizontally polarized SSB, and for satellites that can change polarization the whole time. Uh, they really work quite well as well. Uh, so the receiver layout is, uh, we have lots of RTLSDRs, one, one for each band that do 2 megahertz worth of bandwidth each. Um, and then you'll notice we've now got three of them running on 430 megs to cover uh, 432 up to 438. Uh, those are three together into a splitter and then they go into the single helix. Um, the 10 gigs and 2 meters are both on their own RTL SDRs, and then we've got power injectors for the uh, mastered yeah, preamp. That's about 10 gigahertz, have you got an LMB on the top there? Yeah, yeah it's uh, one of these face off blue yeah. um, LMBs, 15 quid off either. So it, it, so it tends, to, tends to drift a bit. Yeah. Yeah. It, it down converts to 618 megs, yeah. and then the RTL SDRs tune to 618. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sorry? Yeah. 816, so I think it's 800. Uh, but, um, we, and then we've got a tweak in the software that makes it turn up as 10 gigahertz, even though the RTL SDR isn't actually tuned to that. And we've, got a, we've got a big notch filter on 430 megs because of the local repeater, so we can get to it. So this is the uh, RF layout. So up at the top of the mast, that's the 77 antenna, and then we've got a hammer in the box in there. Uh, with the filter and the preamp. And then um, this is the actual setup in the shed at the bottom. So we've got the RTL SDRs are all in this box. Uh, this was made by Martin. And, um, and then these, uh, that's the splitter for the 430 megs. So that goes into three of them. And then these are the DC power injectors. So we've got that's coax coming straight down from the shed into the power injectors and then either into the RTL SDR or first into the splitter. Uh, the RTL SDRs have been modified, uh, again by Martin, uh, who's added this shielding on front of them, which reduces the spurious noise you get from the digital, the USB, you get back into the RF. Um, and he's also on most of them at the moment, I think all but two meters now, have uh, TCXOs as well. So we've replaced the drifty crystal that's on there with proper TCXO. Uh, as it's currently set up, we've just moved in, frequency offsets aren't quite correct, but it doesn't drift as much, which is great. Uh, 10 gigs still drifts a little, but that's because the LMB is up at the top of the mast and experiences quite a bit of temperature drift. Does that screen make a lot of difference? Um, from the test Martin did, it, it did, yes. 
Uh, so he's got some um, pictures on his website of, uh, I believe, the dongles without anything plugged into them and comparing one before adding the screening and after. And there's quite a lot less noise spikes on it after. Uh, so just before I take some questions, um, that's the boring bit, that's the PC that runs it all, it's connected. Um, and then this is a screenshot I took on the way up, so we're driving up the M3 and I put out a uh, CQ call on 145-200 and uh, caught it on the web SDR there. Um, and then that's looking up at the mast. Uh, these are the rate call antennas uh, that I talked about, so got UHF ones and then VHF ones. Uh, currently not connected to anything, but if anyone thinks of a use. Yeah. Any questions? Uh, what's the reason for splitting 430 into 3 as the uh, So we wanted to, plug, uh, we wanted to uh, cover the beta band, the repeaters, and the satellite band. And the RTL SDR zone do 2 MHz each. Oh, yeah, okay. So. Only. <laughs> yes. You can get them to do wider, uh, but they drop Top off massively yeah. at the edges, so it's not worth it. Got an extra USB cable in that connected to the USB bandwidth handler. <laughs> we're, we've been having a few issues with this. Um, so we've currently got five running, and the plan is to have six, because we do have 23 sevens capability as well. Uh, we've had it before, uh, 1296 megs. Uh, but the mask head preamp's blown up, unfortunately, so that's being repaired at the moment. So the plan is eventually to put six in here, and we've, I mean, there's six USB ports on the back, but I can't have to plug these into the front to get them to work. Um, we do have a PCI USB card, which I'm going to try out as well. Um, I'm also, the kernel occasionally spits out too much power on the USB and resets on them. Because um, they, they draw quite a bit of power. Uh, so just about is the answer. Um, and we are struggling a bit with that. But hopefully with the extra card we'll be able to do six. I yeah, noticed the, uh, unless I'm wrong, the, the software is available to uh, uh, to people putting up public servers, but um, I did notice it's so much better than GQRX. Right. <laughs> so, so is, the, is there any, any scope for uh, you know running your own private server? Uh, so Pieta, who's written the software, um, he I don't know how many people have seen the HF Web SDR. Uh, based in the Netherlands, that he, he runs the 0 to 30 megahertz. Uh, uh, this is uh, just about on the German board, yeah? I, I think so, I'm not aware yeah, I'm exactly where it is. Yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah. Um, he, he runs that with very high performance hardware um, and it works amazingly. He doesn't like the RTL SDRs quite so much um, because they have very limited dynamic range. Um, and we've had to do all this, we've had to put the have amp on, we've had to filter them, and we've also had to have add a notch as well because GB3FN is less than a mile away, and when the gap, that gets keyed up, it currently knocks out 430 megahertz completely. The dongles just get overloaded and you can't see anything else. Uh, we, are, uh, we are sorting that out with the notch force though. Um, so he's not very keen on distributing it publicly, um, because he doesn't want lots of very mediocre sites for it. Um, and he's, uh, yeah. He, he uh, needs to talk to him about it. I was thinking more personal sites. More personal. Uh, talk, to, talk to Pieter about it, yeah. is the answer. Um, he likes all the software distribution to go through him. <coughs> yep. Are there uh, any plans to integrate this with sort of an automatic decoder for streams? Obviously, you, you would have a difficulty with all the different protocols, but if you pulled in a particular set of settings, any of the ones that were streaming digital data could be decoded with that. Is there any plans for that? Um, the, until recently, this ran with, uh, with Java, and it was very difficult to play with even in the browser. Uh, it's now HTML5. Um, and I had a little play around and saw that you use WebSockets for streaming the audio down. And uh, as far as I can tell, you do. Uh, slash stream and then give it the parameter of the frequency you want and the mode you want and it will give you back WebSocket audio. Mm. Um, I haven't managed to decode it yet but I was talking to Maxell and IRC who was looking at this as well and 
where he's looking at possibly building a decoder that just hooks straight into it. Um, and you give it a frequency and it'll do it. Or we have tons of them lined up. Um, or one big one that does the whole frequency range and just decodes anything it finds. Yeah. We're, we're, we're thinking about it, but um, anyone else that wants to have a go at that can. Okay. 